So the question is, how much of a threat to the UFC lightweight championship is Islam Makachev today? He's coming off of two big victories against Drew Dober and uh, Tiago Moises, so it's getting interesting. He's currently ranked number nine, and after his last victory, he pretty much called the whole division out. Uh, Charles Oliveira, Dustin Poirier, Michael Chandler, Tony Ferguson, Benil DeRouche, called them all out. So, of course, not all those fights make sense. Uh, he's going to get a big name for his next fight. Now, personally, you know, there's probably four names I think that he could go against. And the first one I'm going to throw out is Gregor Gillespie. Uh, Gregor Gillespie is a high caliber uh, wrestler. Uh, he, he pushes the pace. He, he can wrestle with uh, Islam. And that alone is reason for him to have that fight. You know, if they get into a scrap, uh, I'm, in my mind, I'm thinking like, What's going to happen if Gregor Gillespie just ends up getting, getting dominated? Because what happens with these uh, Dagestanian uh, MMA artists, uh, mixed martial artists, is their, their wrestling is just so much pressure. And when you think you're about to escape, it's like quicksand. Like you have your one or two or three or four or five, how many go-to moves you have to reverse and counter wrestling. But what happens when I see these guys fight anybody, like the majority, like 90% of the time when, when I see them get into that real true grappling game, you have your surefire go-to escape and they have a surefire counter to your escape. So you get drawn back into their world and it just demoralizes you over time. And Islam Makachev, he's a fighter where He'll give you the hands in, in the first, and I don't watch a lot of his fights, so correct me if I'm wrong, but for the last fight I just watched, yeah, he'll throw the hands with you to give the crowd some entertainment and, and just get his skills up, which I appreciate. Uh, it feels like he's, he's, he's testing himself out there just to get that feel for it, and then he transitions into his, his go-to, his, his necessary high-caliber skill set of, of getting to the ground and wrestling. He keeps it entertaining too. You know, his clinches are crazy. He has the Muay Thai clinch. He has the grap the Greco clinch. You know, he has the, the double legs. And that's all great to see. So him going against Gregor Gillespie, I just fear that we might get, well, I think against anybody, that's just his style. But against Gregor Gillespie, I'll just feel so mad if it just gets to the point where he just demoralizes Gregor Gillespie and we can't get it on the feet. You know, yeah, I want to see the grappling, but I, would, I definitely want to see the striking too. And I think Gregor Gillespie might have an advantage on the feet. That's why I feel like it would go to the ground. But this is a fight game. I can't make these predictions. I got to do some research. If that was the fight to be announced, I would definitely, uh, you know, fill everybody in on that. So my second fighter would be Dan Hooker. Uh, like I said, Islam Makhachev was calling out everybody. Dan Hooker put up a post on Twitter uh, pretty much saying that he called everybody out except for Dan Hooker. Uh, well, if that's the case or if that's not the case, I would know, but the fight sounds exciting to me. We know Dan Hooker is a striking type of guy, but out there in New Zealand, uh, they do the grappling too. They got some high caliber grappling. So that would be interesting too. That fight is a, it's a striker versus a grappler. So what happens when that fight goes to the ground? There's a theme in what I'm talking about, you know, Gillespie grappling, Dan Hooker, striker going against a grappler. What happens if the striker ends up on the ground and he does what I mentioned earlier, which is just keep on pulling you in and you can't escape. You know, Dan Hooker is known for that circling around the cage and being a counter guy. So I can see him, you know, get some underhooks and, you know, working his shots and sprawling, but it's just that pressure is, is so, so fluid and so much. Now, for the two big names that I think are most likely for Islam Makachev to get, the first name is Rafael Dos Anjos. I feel like Rafael Dos Anjos is already ready to fight. He was the emergency backup just in case the Conor McGregor versus Dustin Poirier three fight wasn't gonna go on, which was a surprise to me because I didn't even know they had a backup. I remember in past UFC events, I would know there was a backup fight, like an emergency fighter in place, but uh, I didn't know about this one. So Rafael Dos Anjos, he made weight just a week ago and he's healthy. 
So he's gonna stay fit, stay in shape until his next fight gets called out. Who that's gonna be? Maybe it's Islam. I don't think he took too much uh, damage in this last fight against Thiago Moises. So it makes sense. And the big fight, the one I think is going to be the one, and I haven't seen any re replies or responses from Tony Ferguson, but Tony Ferguson is a main event fighter. Uh, he's looking to come off of a two fight skid. So it's up to Tony Ferguson to determine what route he wants to go. My conventional wisdom would be take a lesser fight to build your skills up and you're with a new coach. Take a fighter that's not so known and, and just and fill things out. You know, forget the hype, forget the noise. Um, just get your skills up and go to work. Now, is that a possibility? Is that an option contractually? I don't know. But I feel like Tony, uh, the UFC will say, hey, this is the fight we want to make. Here's the, here's the check. Sign the dotted line. And there's already bad blood. You know, Islam's talking about trying to retire Tony Ferguson. Tony Ferguson never got a chance to fight Khabib Nurmagomedov, even though they tried a handful of times. For some weird reason, there's always some type of incident, injury, or occurrence that prevented that fight from, occur from happening. So uh, the next best thing is to get Tony Ferguson in there with Islam Makhachev. I just question if the goal was to fight could be when you're on the top of your career, when you're you know running through opponents. But lately, you've lost two major fights. Would it be wise to go right into that? It's a it's a coin flip. It makes sense to go ahead and take that fight and. and just put throw all the chips into the middle of the table. That's for sure. And I wouldn't even if I was in that position, I wouldn't look at it like that. I would look at it as a fighter that I'm, that just needs to be broken down. So I'm not saying that Tony is scared or should be scared or worried about uh, Islam per se. I'm talking about more so from just getting his skill set, that getting that live goals, that live round in. You know, it is what it is. Uh, that fight's going to be made. That's my prediction. That's my number one choice. I, our number one uh, selection. I feel like that's the fight that's going to be made. Could be right. Could be wrong. It's going to be exciting e either way to see. Anyway, uh, I think the next big UFC fight coming up is uh, uh, TJ Dillashaw versus uh, Corey Sanhagen. That's going to be crazy. So uh, let me know what you guys think about that fight. Who's going to win that Corey Sanhagen versus TJ Dillashaw fight? TJ coming off of what? Two year suspension. Corey Sanhagen coming for that belt. He's coming for that belt. But that boy's crazy. That man's sick. His skills are crazy. Anyway, uh, let me know who you guys are picking for the, for the uh, TJ Dillashaw versus Corey Sanhagen fight. And definitely let me know who do you think Islam Makhachev is going to fight? Is he going to be... Tony Ferguson? Is it going to be Javier Dos Anjos? Would it be Dan Hooker, Gregor Gillespie, or someone else? Let's find out in the future. Find me on Twitter. Find me on uh, YouTube like you are right now. Instagram to all that great stuff. I'm out.